I spy with my little eye. A spy-ridden cliche that's incoherent yet simple and 100% dead inside. The Protégé was directed by Martin Campbell, written by Richard Wenk, and stars Maggie Q as Anna. A spy with a particular set of skills and a strong, independent woman that don't need no man, but she's got a man in her life. A father figure, if you will. A man that taught her everything she knew, but not everything he knew. Ha ha ha! Can we get a possible twist? Well, we'll find out. It's Moody, played by Samuel L. Jackson. Of course, the L in Samuel L. Jackson stands for motherfucker. And it's a Moody Blues song. Oh, wait, no, it's not a Moody Blues song. But he's an older spy, and they're happy together because she sees him as a father figure, and she, you know, is she loves him, she appreciates him, and she has a bookstore, and she's just wanting to get back to her life. But, of course, her life is in spying because you have to do spying and everything in a goddamn spy movie. Otherwise, what's the fucking point of calling yourself a goddamn spy movie? So, yes, they have to do assassinations. Life is your creation. Come on, Moody, let's go party. Ha, 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 ha. They work hard for the money. They work hard for the money. Money, money, money. Assassinations for the money. Not Assassination Nation, which I really goddamn loved. That was a great movie. So, anyway, Anna um, is given a mission, and she's trying to find out uh, some stuff about this person. It may or may not be dead. They may be a space elephant on the planet Saturn. Who the fuck knows? We actually find out a little bit later, but despite the incoherency, this movie is really simple. So Anna finds out that uh, her friends and family, you know, people that she loves, end up turning up dead, and she has to revisit her past by going to da 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 nang vietnam and confronting this and figuring out what's going on and why people around her are dying and why somebody wants to keep this particular mystery from being solved. Because they don't want her to solve this mystery to rewrite history. DuckTales, woo-woo. All right, so if the name Martin Campbell sounds familiar, but you can't quite place it, I'm going to name some movies. He directed Goldeneye, Mask of Zorro, Legend of Zorro. He also directed Casino Royale. So some pretty damn good movies, in all honesty. He also directed Vertical Limit, that absolutely terrible mountain climbing movie that pretty much butchered Robert to Robin Tooney's career as far as movies, even though she did some good stuff after that. And they tried to capitalize on Chris O'Donnell being, you know, Robin in the ill-fated Batman and Robin. He also directed the 2011 Green Lantern movie, Dear God, Make It Stop, Make It Stop. This was the spy equivalent of the Green Lantern movie. I fucking hated this. Fucking hated this. I'm sorry. Did I not say it you know, correctly? Fucking hated this. And I'll explain why I hate it. But let me know your thoughts in the comments as far as how you, like, if you've seen this movie, what you thought. Because I was going in blind uh, on this. I'd seen, like, one trailer. It's like, okay, whatever. You know, I saw a movie called Anna that was a great spy movie that was directed by Luc Besson. If you just ignore how Luc Besson has treated women and how there's a massive age gap with the women he dates, you can enjoy his movies, but dear fucking God, Luc Besson's a bit of a creep, isn't he? However, Anna, pretty damn good stylish spy movie. And really, really good stuff. Sasha Luz, I hope that's uh, how her name's pronounced, is fucking tremendous. Seriously, she's great. She's going to have a big, uh, you know, future in Hollywood. That being said, though, this is about the Proje. That does star Maggie Q, who I've loved in pretty much any movie I've seen her in. Yes, even the Fantasy Island uh, movie that came out last year, which was really goddamn ridiculous. Maggie Q has a great presence. She's a great actress. She's fucking gorgeous. She's really fucking gorgeous. Like, Captivates me every time she's on screen. She looks great. She carries herself well. And Samuel L. Jackson's in this. Also, Michael Keaton's in this. And he's had a bit of a career resurgence with the whole Birdman. And also, Robert Patrick is in this as a member of the Hell's Angels chap uh, chapter that is just around da 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 nang Vietnam for some fucking reason. Yeah, Robert Patrick going through a midlife crisis when he's near 70. If he's not near 70, he sure fucking looked like it here. So... Yeah, those are four pretty good actors there. And if <laughs> Richard Wenk, the writer, wrote 16 Blocks of Mechanics, uh, or The Mechanic, rather, uh, Expendables 2, Equalizer 1 and 2, I had to write those down because I really got frustrated watching this. Within the first 15 to 20 minutes, I knew I was in trouble, and then it only got worse. I will explain why without spoiling. I'll spoil in a little bit. This starts with, like, something in 1991 where Samuel L. Jackson's with Moody and Anna meeting. And then we flash forward to 2021 where, you know, it's present day and everything. We don't flash forward to 2051, so we don't get any interstellar spy battles, which I wanted to see ever since Moonraker. <laughs> but anyway, Anna, you know, they're having their life and everything, and we get a little bit of setup. We get characters meeting, and then we just suddenly get stuff that just goes off the goddamn rails on a crazy train. And then we just have to assume that we know who these... It's like we joined the second movie in a trilogy 
and they're like, okay, we just need to assume that everybody knows this stuff. I don't mind if you have to reveal some stuff through flashbacks, but that's what they did here in the worst way possible. It's like the studio kept interfering, and they were like, okay, hey, Campbell, we're going to take this over. We're going to throw some flashback bullshit in here. We're going to bring in a bunch of stuff and do our own shit, but we're going to slap your name on here, and we're going to make you basically take the heat for it because we just want to make a quick profit. Because this will work. People will gobble this shit up because they just want to be back in theaters. That has to have been the mindset because if this didn't have studio interference and they thought this was the best final product to produce, then Martin Campbell should not be allowed to direct another goddamn movie again and this could wreck the careers temporarily of the main act. Well, I mean, even though Robert Patrick at this point, I don't think he's been in all that much. <laughs> and Michael Keaton, you know, he's pretty much Teflon at this point. Samuel Jackson can be even whatever. He's been in Snakes on a Plane. But this really misuses Maggie Q, which I was very disappointed by. It was every spy cliche from like, okay, the horrifying backstory to, oh no, the protege, or you know, the protege has to fight back and everything, and everybody she loves may be dead and or murdered in that order. And also, you know, like, oh, there's a whole bunch of twists and turns and everything. We get Maggie Q dressed up in various outfits. I will say she pulled off that fucking red dress in that restaurant. Wow. Um, but she looked good. The problem is that Maggie Q playing dress up only carries your movie so goddamn far when you have no fucking plot. And then it's like, okay, this guy may be the one they're looking for, but maybe he isn't. Maybe it's this whole thing. Maybe it's, oh, this, you know, this simplified, 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 easy for me to say plot that is just basically, this basically stretched out to like an hour and 50 minutes. This thing could have been accomplished in about uh, 80 minutes and you probably wouldn't have missed shit. It would have made just as much sense at 80 minutes because even though they hodgepodge a whole bunch of these scenes together and you had people acting really weird for no reason and you had things of convenience like, oh, this character's dead. Oh, no, they're not. Oh, that's convenient. I'm taking my cake and eating it too. And then I'm going to take my ball and I'm going to go home. This movie basically just gave up like about halfway through. It was like, okay, fuck it. Throw a bunch of scenes together. Let's just have everybody turn on everybody. And let's just have it make no goddamn sense. Oh, this this person's bad. No, suddenly they're not. Oh, wait, these people are bad and they're going to turn on this other bad person. It made no goddamn sense. After a while, it's like, okay, things are just happening for the sake of it. They're all characters of circumstance. They're all thinly veiled. I mean, there's no depth to any of the characters. This is about as bad as the rhythm, um, <clears throat> the rhythm nation, the rhythm section that came out last year, despite the fact they had Blake Lively in it. Um, it, that was pretty goddamn bad, but it had a really kick-ass, um, you know, song at the end credits. This doesn't even have that. This misuses so many goddamn people, and just, the action scenes aren't even that creative. Like, oh, they can do some flippy shit and flippy doodah stuff and whatever, and it's all stuff we've seen before. It, none of it matters, none of it means anything, and it just gets to the point <laughs> where everything's numb. That's really all I gotta say about that. I'm gonna get a spoil, I fucking hated this. Fucking hated this goddamn movie. It was fucking terrible. Let's get into spoilers, shall we? So, okay, don't see, wait till streaming. Fucking wait till streaming. It ain't gonna be that long before this gets out and out of theaters, especially with the fact that I cannot imagine this is gonna do all that well once word of mouth gets out. So, spoilers. We're gonna go into spoilers here. Maggie Q looked gorgeous. Spoilers. Okay, so they're in, um, so we started in 1991 and da 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 nang. And Samuel Jackson finds a bunch of people murdered, and then finds a young person, um, you know, young girl, and, with a gun. Oh no, it's Anna, because we, we find out a little bit later what happened. Anna basically gets uh, taken in by Samuel Jackson's character. We flash forward 30 years later, she owns a bookstore, um, has an employee, meets Michael Keaton's character, <clears throat> and that ends up being her um, fatal mistake. And then it turns out she's trying to find out if this person is still alive or not. This person may have died in a car bombing, you know, but oh no, maybe it's the person's son. Maybe they're carrying on the legacy and doing this espionage thing where they're, it's a smoke screen of like, you know, dealing with rich people, but they're dealing in the worst stuff like human trafficking and drug dealing and all this stuff and very good time management skills. I can barely work on, you know, holding a pen and writing stuff down while looking at my phone. I can barely do that. Man, those are very good time management skills. So Anna basically finds out that, you know, Moody's dead and everybody's dead and everything. And then she gets captured and water, uh, you know, Chinese water torture, water boarded, uh, boarded not motorboated, um, as much as I would like to do that to her. This is getting weird. It turns out that Michael Keaton's character is all behind it, but maybe he's not behind it. Maybe he has feelings for her and maybe he's not all that bad or maybe she's just really stupid or maybe the characters don't have any goddamn depth. So they're just going to do stuff, you know, to advance the thinly veiled plot such as it is. 
And then it also turns out that Moody's not dead, that he actually is very much alive. He faked his death, bl uh, blasted a guy, <clears throat> and then blasted his face off and made it look like he was, uh, like he was dead. And they had all this, you know, cool spy stuff and everything. And they somehow managed to have unlimited funds, unlimited access to this stuff. And it takes a bunch of bullets and somehow just keeps going or whatever. Even Chris Vet Redfield had to eat an herb at one point when zombies kept biting him. And they're fucking zombies. How can you eat herbs and somehow survive a zombie bite? So anyway, back to this. Robert Patrick ends up coming in as somebody that she knew. That's part of the Hell's Angels chap uh, chapter. That is the chapel. There is also a chapel later. That it that helps her, and they have one scene together, where they where she confronts this one guy, and it turns out like oh maybe this is the guy that did it, but then it wasn't the guy that did it. It was actually somebody else. Because why the fuck wouldn't it be? Why would you want to get this movie over any quicker? Let's stretch this motherfucker out as long as possible, and then more people betray people. You know, as far as like this one guy, he works for some uh, some big business guy and then shoots him in the head. I wish it was that easy to take over a goddamn CEO position of a company. No company would be left standing by next month if they did that. Don't do that. Murder's bad, okay? So anyway, Anna then gets captured and all this stuff happens and whatever. But then she escapes because, of course, she fucking escapes. And man, because these people are really, really goddamn stupid, she gets beat up at one point and, you know, Chinese water torture her. Well, you know, the waterboarding and all that stuff, the shirt over her face. And then she ends up somehow being up fresh as a daisy when they try to hang her. She manages to get out. After finding out that Michael Keaton's character, Rembrandt, um, manages to, you know, like, tells her that he's behind all this stuff, or he's working for somebody that's behind all this stuff, she gets her Hells Angels people together, and it turns out Moody is very much alive and faked his own death and everything, and then blows himself up in the panic room that happens to exist without Jodie Foster, because he was sent out to kill that person by that person, but it turns out that it was uh, him faking his own goddamn death and everything, so why the fuck wouldn't, you know, he want to carry out the contract, and then Maggie Q takes a whole bunch of bullets at a party and everything, and does reunite, uh, eventually, uh, early, a little bit earlier in the movie, while her and uh, Rembrandt are fighting, they end up fucking, I mean, uh, being in bed with Maggie Q, there are worse ways to go, it's like when Maggie Q decided to, uh, you know, shove a guy in a bathtub and everything and try to drown him to, you know, torture him. There are worse ways to go. I'm a sick individual. Maggie Q ends up surviving because her and Rembrandt have a face-off and they shoot each other simultaneously. She's already got a bullet here and a bullet in the side, but she somehow manages to take another bullet. And that's it. Scene. Scene. Fuck this. Fuck every goddamn person that, you know, um, had anything to do with green lighting this. Fuck this movie. Fuck everything about it. I hate it. I hate it so much. One of the worst goddamn things I've seen this year. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.